expert tutorial number two. I got a lot of response from the first video and 25 people are gonna win copies, 25. I'm also gonna be giving away 20 more copies of XSplit in this video. Now, first off, let me go into contest winners of last week. 20 copies of XSplit. Everybody here has won a copy of XSplit. I wanna say congratulations. I'm gonna be giving away 20 more copies of XSplit in this video. Now, in order to win, all you have to do is go to this site right here, xsplit.com slash Swifty, register, and then in the comment below, Leave your registered name. I'm gonna choose a winner from the comments of the registered people. All right, you ready for more advanced stuff? I'm gonna show chroma key effects. I'm gonna show how to crop. I'm gonna show you how to do correct YouTube settings and correct live stream settings. Hope you enjoy. All right, guys, welcome to part two of the XSplit tutorial. This is gonna be more advanced stuff. If you wanna see the basic guide, you're gonna to have to go to part one, which is right there. All right, the first thing I'm gonna show you are the video effects. Remember I showed this in part one? I'm gonna actually play it, and as you can see, I'm chroma keyed into the game, not into the game, I'm chroma keyed into the XSplit and I have right here a video playing in the background, I have another video playing in the background and I have a third video playing in the background and they're all layered in 3D. That's the first thing I'm going to show you guys how to do. Hey guys, here we go in XSplit and I have right here the super effects. I'm going to go press scene one right now and you're going to see them all play. Right over here, I have my flag of ownership. As you can see, it's playing, it's playing live. And over here, I have my character in the game and it's tilted in 3D. And in the background, I have the Razor logo playing and you might be able to hear it. I have the music playing also. Let me first show you how to change this. If you shift, left click, double click, it resets it. Now you keep shift or control down and you press the left mouse button and you can tweak the image any way you want. Same goes for this one. Let me put this like this. <laughs> there you go, guys. Isn't that awesome? All right, next up, I'm gonna show you how to do the scrolling text that goes across the bar. You can do really interesting things, like you can advertise things, advertise your YouTube page, advertise your Facebook, put anything you want in the game. I'm also gonna show you text effects to make it into 3D. So the first thing you're gonna do is go right down here to add and go to title, add a title. And here you can write what your text is gonna be. I'm gonna be, hello, my name is Swifty. Now, right here you can choose the colors, what color you want it to be. I'm gonna make it green. Um, and I click this option right here, scrolling slow. Now it's very huge, but you can adjust the size of it and make it smaller. And I'm gonna make it go right here out of my arm, straight into the wall. I like uh, to configure it, you right click it and press configure and now I can, I'm gonna add a space so that uh, it doesn't like spam itself. There we go. There, see, now there's a big space between the letters and you could also add, for example, up here on the top, you can do your Facebook. Here, let me add another one for my with my Facebook. Add title facebook.com slash Swifty fans. That's my Facebook. Scrolling, I'm gonna do fast scrolling this time. There we go. Uh, let me, hold on, let me add a space. There you go, see? <laughs> it's a little fast, let me, let me make it go slower. Slow, there we go. See, check it out. Now, here's, a, here's another interesting thing. You could also do the same effect that I did earlier by pressing shift or control. Watch what you can do. 3D, coming out of the screen, coming at you like this. I'm gonna put it right there. <laughs> One of the easiest ways to import a MIDI file straight into XSplit is to drag and drop. I'm gonna grab right here. Um, Battleground without cooldowns. It's a it's an actual media file that I created and there it is right here And you can tweak it there we go So very easily you can drop and drag files straight into your XSplit very easy to do. XSplit has another option, it's called Screen Capture Region, and you can capture anything that's displayed on the monitor or any other monitor. 
Let me show you how that's done. I'm going to capture these two pictures and I'm going to import them straight into my project and straight into my exploit. A really good reason to use the screen region capture is when you, someone else is on Skype and they have their video, you can capture their actual video of them talking live and you can import them straight into your project. That's how I get Element QT into my videos. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the resolution because since I'm doing, I'm recording this on one monitor, um, I'm going to edit the resolution and go a little bit smaller. Let me try uh, 1200. There we go. There. Now you'll be able to see the, uh, the pictures. I'm going to go here, add, add screen region. And you see how this little red X appears? And I'm going to capture this. There we go. That's me skateboarding, by the way. And it goes straight into my project. And you can resize it, put it anywhere you want. <laughs> there you go. And I'm going to do it again. Add screen region, and I'm going to capture this. So if, if this were a webcam, I would just go like this, right on them. Grab it. Set it where I want. Very easy to do. Next up is the chroma key effects. How do I use the green screen to make myself appear seamlessly in the game? Seamlessly on your screen. I'm gonna show you chroma keys next. As you can see behind me, there's a green screen and I'm gonna show you how to make this transparent. Very easy to do. First thing you have, have to do is get a green screen. There's a very economical ways of doing it. You could do it with paper or you could just paint the wall. It doesn't necessarily have to be green. It could be any other color. It just has to be a color you can work with. Like for example, if I have it green on my shirt, it will appear transparent too. Uh, that's why I like wearing razor shirts. You notice I have the, the razor logo. It gets transparent. It, it's a, it adds a pretty cool effect. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is show you how to import a camera. You go add, add camera on the top. I'm going to add this one, see? But I'm going to delete one since I already have two, and I'm going to show you how to do the chroma key effect. You're going to do right click, you're going to go to color, and you're going to go to chroma key effect. I already have the option set. Uh, normally, I'm gonna I'm gonna set it on default so you guys can see it. Okay, that's what it looks like normally. Um, remember, there's three tabs: cam, color, and position. You're gonna go to color. Make sure the chroma key is pressed, and you're gonna go to eyedrop tool. You're gonna click that, and then you're gonna click on the screen, and that's the color. Now you're gonna tweak these settings. You're gonna go left and right until it takes a while to do it, but eventually, watch. I'll get it to work. Wow, all of a sudden it just fixed itself. There you go. See, there we go, did it. It only took me a couple seconds. Uh, got a chroma key effect. Remember, you could also use the screen region capture to grab someone else's webcam and put them right there next to you. If they have a green screen, you could do a chroma key effect too. Very easy to do and awesome. All right, next up, I'm gonna show you guys how to set up XSplit if you wanna do live streaming. There's a lot of settings that you need to know about and I have them for you. Go up here, up here to broadcasting, and you're gonna edit the channels. Now here, you're gonna click add, and it'll give you a list of all the live streaming platforms. Now YouTube doesn't show up here, but I'm gonna show you how to set up YouTube. Um, let's choose one here, let's say own 3D. All right, here we have the settings. You add your username and info, and as soon as you do that, your channel will show up on this part right here. Then you choose your location and then now the settings, the video encoding and the audio encoding, you have to put these settings depending on your CPU speed and your internet speed. But I'm gonna show you, but I'm gonna show you all the presets you need to know in order to get it up and running. All right, here are all the presets that you're gonna need to be able to live stream from the slowest internet connection speed all the way to the fastest internet connection speed. Now, one thing that's very important is the preset. If you have a fast computer, you can put this on slower. And if you have a very slow computer, you're gonna need to put this on very fast. Depending on what preset you do, it'll strain your CPU. So fast computer is slower, slower computer is faster. Now, changing the quality of the bit rate will not affect your CPU. I'm going to show you right now my live stream settings. Now YouTube is a little bit different. When you do a live stream on YouTube, you have to have a partnered YouTube channel and you have to have live stream activated. And from there, when you start a live stream project on YouTube, it's going to give you the name of the live stream and it's going to give you the address. And th that information is what you're going to add here. 
You're going to need the shared link and you're going to need the stream name. That's pretty much all you need to live stream on YouTube. Now, these are my settings right here. My preset, I'm sorry, is right here slower because I have a very fast PC. I have the max quality, my uh, bit rate 4000 and my and my buffers at 4000. My resolution at 1900 by 1080. The audio encoding is at 44 kilohertz and the bit rates at 128K. Or those are my live stream settings. Now there's also a button here to test your bandwidth. That's very important to do because you might have a very fast internet connection, but it's, you still might not be able to use the maximum settings. So you have to adjust it and tweak it. Test your live stream to make sure that it's, that it's running smoothly. And then uh, you'll be able to find your settings. Right now, my YouTube settings might be a little high. One, a live stream at 1080, but I doubt it's going to do that. I haven't seen any YouTube live streams stream higher than 720. So I'm going to adjust and tweak these settings down from this setting. So I'm going to probably be at uh, 720. I'm going to probably be at this setting. Live streaming on YouTube at 720. And finally, the most important thing, how to set up XSplit so you can upload videos to YouTube. There's a very important settings that you must know about. If not, your videos are gonna fail. YouTube seems to have a problem encoding videos that include B-frames. To avoid this issue, you're gonna need to encode without the B-frames. To do this, we're gonna have to edit the video encoding settings. But first off, let me show you a little example. This is a video that I made before I knew about these changes. And watch the beginning of the video. See how it's a little bit messed up? And then after about five to 10 seconds, it fixes itself. That's the problem that we're gonna avoid. I'm gonna show you how to fix it right now. We're gonna go to broadcast and you're gonna edit the channels. We're gonna go to the channel that you're gonna be working on with YouTube. For example, here, my local recording, all, all of my local recordings go to YouTube. So I edit and if you look right here, X split the preset, I already have the line added. You're gonna add this line right here at the end of the preset. Same goes for your YouTube settings. I'm gonna go right here to my YouTube settings, edit, and um, I'll just add it again just so you can see. My settings are slower, a slower preset, and I just copy paste straight in there, and that's it. That's it, fixed! All right, here I'm gonna show you one of my recent videos so you can see the change and you see how it, how it fixed it. I'm gonna press play right now. No lag, no mess up, perfect. All right, here's one last piece of advice that I can give you. Um, as you see on the bottom here, I have like a whole bunch of things. I added a whole bunch of things just to clutter it up. The more things you have here, like right now, see these are check marks. They can turn them on or off, the things that, that appear on the screen. Either, either it be music or, or <laughs> music or uh, media files. The more stuff you have cluttered on there, the more it will lag every time you change a scene. Like for example, I go to this scene and back to this scene. You notice the delay? See how long it took? So a good idea would be to get rid of the stuff that you don't need. Remove. I'm gonna remove a bunch of stuff. And only use the essentials. Check it out. I removed everything. Now watch me go to scene two. Okay. Wait, scene two is actually, let me play it. Now I'm gonna go back to scene one and look instantly see that's one piece of advice i can give you and i have a very fast computer and it lagged out so hope this helped you guys hope to see you guys making some videos soon all right guys i hope you enjoyed this video expert tutorial number two make sure to register if you're a chance to win as always good to hear thanks for watching oh.